Earlier this morning, the Federal Reserve cut interest rates by 50 basis points or 0.5%. This is the first cut in over four years as the global easing cycle commences across major central banks. But what does this mean for markets? And is inflation now under control? I'm pleased to be joined today with Charm De Silva, Head of Fixed Income, to share his initial impressions and key takeaways from today's decision. So Charm, let's start off. What did you make of the Fed's decision to cut rates? Yeah, so this morning, the Fed cut rates by half a percent or 50 basis points uh, to take uh, the Fed funds uh, target range uh, to 4.75 to 5 percent. Now, it's worth noting that coming in to the meeting, um, you know, economists had been tipping uh, a 25 basis point cut, uh, but futures markets had been increasingly leaning uh, towards a 50 basis point cut in recent days. So it wasn't a huge surprise. Um, ultimately, uh, given the moderation in inflation across uh, in the US um, and the weakening in the US labor market that we've seen, um, FOMC members probably felt the need to get policy away from a restrictive level uh, towards a more neutral uh, set setting. Uh, that said, um, it wasn't a unanimous decision. Um, we did have one dissenting voter on the FOMC uh, that voted for a 25 basis point cut instead. Um, I also wanted to add that the impression that I got from Fed Chair Powell during the press conference uh, was that he wanted to maybe project the idea that while 50 basis points is the start of the cutting cycle, um, we shouldn't necessarily expect it will be the pace uh, going forward um, as the Fed you know, recalibrates uh, policy rates. Great. Now, the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee, they release quarterly economic projections on GDP, unemployment and inflation. Uh, can you give us a summary of what's changed since the June projections? And also, regarding the dot plot, what does that tell us about the future path of rates going forward? Yeah, so there are really two parts to the summary of economic projections uh, that the Fed releases uh, following the March, June and September and December FOMC meetings. Um, firstly, there's the economic outlook, um, where the Fed updates its forecasts for growth, uh, for inflation uh, and for unemployment. Um, then there's also uh, the dot plot, uh, which is where FOMC members submit their estimates of where they think the Fed funds rate will be uh, at the end of the current year, the end of next year, and the end of uh, the year after that, in addition to where they feel the long-term or neutral rate uh, will be. Now, it's called the dot plot uh, because it looks like a series of dots from the chart. Each uh, dot ref uh, reflects um, each member's estimate of where they um, expect the Fed funds uh, rate to be. Now, the latest economic forecasts had a very slight downward revision uh, to growth and inflation over the coming years, um, and a slight upward revision uh, to unemployment. Um, that said, it's worth keeping in mind that the current forecasts are still very consistent with this idea of a soft landing, um, with inflation expected to stabilize in the low 2% uh, region uh, over the coming year, and unemployment expected to top out at around 4.4%, which is not far away from the 4.2% uh, the US economy is currently at. Uh, now onto the dot plot, which is often more interesting uh, to markets. Now, the Fed did imply a more aggressive uh, easing cycle compared to their dot plot estimate in June. Um, specifically, the median FOMC member expects uh, Fed funds to be at around 4.4% for year end uh, and 3.4% for the end of 2025. So that implies a 50 basis, 50 basis points worth of cuts over the remaining two meetings this year uh, and an additional 100 basis points of cuts uh, next year. Um, the, the median FOMC member also uh, is projecting a long run neutral estimate of 2.9%, uh, um, which they expect to reach in uh, 2026. Right. And how did the market react to all this? Yeah, so it was a very, I guess, interesting market reaction. And, and there were really two phases to it. There was the initial knee-jerk reaction to the 50 basis point cut. Uh, and that really saw a textbook move in US uh, fixed income. So we saw the US, uh, we saw yields across the US treasury, treasury curve um, decline um, in what we call a bull steepening move. So that's where shorter term bond yields fall by more than longer term bond yields. We also also saw the broad US dollar uh, weaken. Uh, we saw gold rally. We also saw US equities initially rally. Um, but ultimately, much of that initial move was quickly unwound um, as the market digested 
both the dot plot and uh, Chair Powell's press conference. Um, we ended the session you know, with the US dollar actually higher on the day, gold down on the day, uh, long-term bond yields were actually also higher on the day, uh, and US equities were broadly unchanged. Um, so it, I think in some ways it was consistent with the move you'd expect at the start of an easing cycle, the US yield curve steepened, mm-hmm. um, but other markets were suggesting that you know, maybe the dot plot and Powell's press conference uh, was a little bit you know, more hawkish uh, than expected. And final question, Charm, what does this cut mean for the RBA? Do you think they'll follow suit in your view? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's worth noting that the Fed uh, wasn't the first central bank uh, to be cutting uh, this cycle. Um, we've already seen cuts uh, from Canada, from the euro area, uh, from the UK and from New Zealand. Um, that means Australia is actually quite far behind in this global easing cycle, uh, but we do expect the RBA will eventually be pulled into it. Um, at the end of the day, we are an open economy with many global linkages, um, and a lot of the economic dynamics that you're seeing play out overseas uh, will eventually make their way here, albeit with a bit of a lag. Um, and our current call is for the RBA uh, to start its cutting cycle early next year. Thanks, Sean, for sharing your insights today. If you wanted to learn more, um, you can visit our insights page for more uh, commentary on markets from our portfolio management desk and also the investment strategy and research team. 